Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the enchanting operetta, The Great Wall, starring Gordon McRae and his lovely guest, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae. Thank you, Marlon Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, tonight I am Johann Strauss the Younger, and Lucille Norman is the lovely Therese, as we bring you The Great Waltz. Would you tell Fraulein Therese, please, that Herr Strauss is here? Are you Herr Strauss? Oh, I just love your music. I'm afraid you're thinking of my father. You see, there are two of us. Uh, do, do you compose, too? Well, sometimes a little. Shani, you're early. Crazy. I've got news. Great news. Herr Strauss has just been telling us that he is a composer. A very good composer. Oh, it must be awfully difficult to find new melodies out of your head. Oh, music doesn't come from the head, from the heart. It, it's always there waiting for something to let it out. Well, a morning like this, for instance, or a look in a woman's eyes. And a, a tune is born. Dark girls are fair, you are my songs, leading me where. Dark as the night, fair as the morn. Whenever I see you, music is born. Right eyes come sing, melodies come start. Tunes come dancing, beating in my heart. You come to me, everywhere displayed. I plan you all in my waltzer. Set my heart a flutter. There's a melody in every word you utter. Every smile is like a song you sing to me. Life is music that you bring to me. So What's the news? You're bursting with it. Tracy, Steinbrück has engaged me to conduct. Oh, Shani. At the new Peterhof Gardens. Do you know what this is going to buy us, Tracy? A marriage license. Oh, Shani, darling. I shall tell everyone in the audience, please like his music. It's so full of love. Anybody who's ever been in love will know, Tracy. Sands as my 
my guide, and the fates I'll decide with you by my side. Though my goal may be far, I can reach it while I see the light of that star in the sky. It's difficult at first to find the things you sought for, things you give your time and thought for. Your happiness is just the kind that must be I dreamed, but dare not say the dreams that seem so far away at last have come a little nearer. At last the skies are growing Promise me you won't tell your father about conducting. Why, Racy? I think he's the reason you've never been hired in Vienna. Your you father must... is jealous of your talent. The Waltz King doesn't like any pretenders to his throne. You're mistaken, Racy. I'm going to tell father. Then I'm going to do something. There's a very influential person I'm going to see to help protect you from your father. <laughs> music race. Keep playing. I knew you'd like it, Countess. Oh, it's a waltz that forces you to dance. Does this one have words? Oh, yes, Countess. It's called Only One Hour. Listen. And I can tell from the way you see it that you're in love with the composer. Oh, I am, Countess, very much. Then I shall attend to the father. You and I, we shall concoct a little scheme, Racy. Now, when does young Mr. Strauss give you next music lesson? Tomorrow. I shall be there. 
play and sing some of this wonderful music. Perhaps an extra pair of ears will be listening. <laughs> Dear Countess, where are we going? Oh, to a bakery shop, Herr Strauss, containing very rare delicacies. Mm -hmm. A daughter who sings like a dream, the daughter Sutor, who composes magnificent songs. <laughs> well, I'm always anxious to help young composers. It's the more established composers I am interested in, Herr Strauss, such as yourself. You have played every capital of Europe but mine. <laughs> It has always been one of my ambitions to play at the court of your country, Countess. I think I can arrange that with my ambassador. My countrymen will be enchanted by the music of the Wolf King. It's curious how a title spoken in jest many years ago clings to one. It is richly deserved. At any rate, I have never had to defend the title. Well, who's that play? That, my dear Herr Strauss, is my surprise. He is a young man who may one day be your rival. You may yet have to fight for the title of Walt King. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I should like very much to meet him. Right through this door, Herr Strauss? Mm -hmm. Charlie! Father! Uh, your ladyship. Herr Strauss! Hello, Racy. What was that you were playing, Charlie? Oh, I was just improvising, Father. Don't be so modest, Charlie. It's a new waltz composed by your son, Herr Strauss. It has a lovely quality, don't you think? You have a kind heart, madame. But uh, let me see that music. What? Well, this is just a jumble against every established rule and form. I thank you, Countess, for speaking in my behalf. But this is an old argument between my father and me. I maintain you must write the music you feel. But my father is traditionalist who feels one must write according to all the established rules. But this beautiful melody... Madame, about a great many things I know nothing. About one thing I know a great deal. That thing is music. I was writing successful waltzes before this boy was born. Nevertheless, my dear young man, I shall be there on your opening night to applaud you. What opening night? I haven't had a chance to tell you, father. But Steinbrück has offered me a chance to conduct at the Peterhof Gardens. You're not sufficiently equipped to conduct. I may tear you apart. I forbid you. Father, I'm going to conduct. What? Are you going to force me to go to Steinbrück and tell him you're incompetent to conduct? Father. Herr Strauss, you wouldn't do that. If my opinion means so little to my son that I must regard him as just another musician. And since he bears my name, I will not have him make a fool of himself on the platform. It is my duty to tell them that what I believe. Listen. Listen to this music. Shani, play it. This is music that will live when every stuffy thing you've ever written is dead and forgotten, Herr Strauss. Listen. Listen to some great music by the great Johann Strauss. Turn for the second act of The Great Waltz in just a moment. Hear that? That's about the way the first railroad locomotive must have sounded when it made its first run back around 1830. And from the very first run of that pint-sized engine, the railroads learned a lesson they have never forgotten. For light as it was, that first locomotive in America was too heavy for the track over which it ran. And from that day to this, it has been a basic rule in railroading that the locomotives and cars which are run over any particular stretch of track or any bridge shall not be heavier than can be carried without damage and deterioration, which would mean heavier expense in maintenance and repair. What was learned so long ago about railroads is now being learned about highways. 
There's an inescapable relationship between the strength of a highway or a bridge and the weight of the vehicles which it can support. This fact was scientifically demonstrated in a test conducted for 11 eastern state highway departments on a rigid paved road in Maryland, a road typical of many thousands of miles of America's highways. The report on the results of that test, issued last week, shows that all other things being substantially equal, the heavier the load, the greater the damage. With an increase of one-fourth in the loads on single axles, there was more than six times as much cracking of the pavement. With an increase of 40% in the loads on tandem or dual axles, there was more than 12 times as much cracking. Yes, highway engineers have learned by experience, by observation, and by scientific tests that failure to protect highways and bridges from abuse and overloading means heavy damage and added cost costs which must be borne by the general taxpayers and by all motorists who use the highways. Fortunately, the steel highways of the railroads are built to take heavy loads, and their maintenance and repair doesn't cost you or any other taxpayer a single penny. And now, here is Act Two of the Lawrence and Lee version of The Great Wall, starring Gordon MacRae as Johann Strauss the Younger and Lucille Norman as Racy, with John McIntyre and Jeanette Nolan as our featured players. Oh, Racy, I don't want to go in. I know how you feel, Shawnee. It was terrible of your father to convince Steinbrook not to hire you. And why is he playing in your place? I don't want to go into the Peterhof Gardens at all. But the Countess said she planned a surprise. Well, whatever it is, I shall have little heart for it. Oh, come on in. Watching everybody dance and sing will cheer us up. Oh, good evening, my young friend. Good evening, Countess. Johnny, the orchestra rehearsed your new waltz this afternoon. It sounded beautiful. Did it? It felt good when I was writing it. Especially when... Oh, what's the use? Nobody will ever hear it. Don't be too sure. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some important work to do. Don't go away. Oh, Racy, if someday I should stand on the podium and conduct an orchestra which is playing my music, every downbeat will say your name. And everybody listening will know that, well, that your name is written on every note. With all my heart I long for you, I wake to make a song for you, each word like a bird flying home. They're all calling for your father. Where is he? I don't know, Lucy. Has anybody seen Herr Strauss? Countess. Yes, Herr Steinbrook? Herr Strauss was last seen entering your carriage. Well, all I know is the ambassador from my country suddenly wished to extend an invitation to the Waltz King. I was good enough to lend him my carriage. Is it a very slow carriage, Countess? My coachman will take hours through the back streets of the city. Meanwhile, Vienna will get a chance to hear some wonderful new music. Countess. What shall I do? They want Strauss, Herr Steinbrook. Give them Strauss. This young man is ready to conduct the waltz. A brilliant idea, brilliant. Is it all right, Charlie? Oh, yes. Yes, Herr Steinbrook. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. 
The Wolf King has been unavoidably delayed, so he, we have asked his son, Johann Strauss the Younger, to conduct. I entrust him to your kindness. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to play a new waltz of my own. It is called the Blue Danube. The great waltz. Yes, Tracy, yes. Then you so blue as our you flow. My heart is with you. That was weeks ago, Father. The sun eclipses the father. <laughs> Young upstart. Father, the doctor said you must not talk. <laughs> oh, Shani. My heart has been so filled with the music of Vienna that there's been no room for affection. Leave room in your heart for more than music. For people, for racing. For, for sons. I'll remember, Father. 
You're a good musician, in spite of me. <laughs> the Blue Danube. A fine melody should be an E-flat instead of D, more brilliant register. Father, relax. Lie back. Uh, 152 waltzes, 24 galops, 6 cotillions, 32 quadrilles, 13 polkas, 18 marches. The sum total of my life. And, oh yes, a son who wrote the Blue Danube. A son who wrote. Father? It seems strange that you weep, Shani. He was hardly a father to you. I am not weeping only because my father is dead, Rayson. But because Vienna has lost her greatest musician. Monsieur Norman will be back in just a moment. And meanwhile, our thanks to Jeanette Nolan, who was the Countess, John McIntyre, who was Johann Strauss the Elder, to Isabel Jewell, her Butterfield, and to our entire company. The Great Waltz, with book and lyrics by Moss Hart and Desmond Carter, and music by Johann Strauss, was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at the same time by the American Railroads. Marvin? Chances are the rich resources of most of the 48 states, the products of forest and farm, mine, mill, and factory in every part of the country, were needed to help fashion the comforts of your home. And to tie together all those far-flung ingredients to help change, say, a giant tree into a gracious table, takes a lot of railroad transportation. And because that's true of most everything you use, it's no wonder that railroads move more tons of freight more miles than all other forms of transportation put together. Thank you, Marvin. And now here again is lovely Lucille Norman. Thank you, Gordon. It was wonderful singing the great waltz with you. And what are you planning for the show train next week? Well, we have an enchanting musical, Lucille, which is delighted theater goes for a long, long time. Sigmund Romberg's tuneful, My Maryland. And Dorothy Kirsten will be Barbara Fritchie. Mm, you wouldn't miss it. Good night, Gordon. Good night, Lucille. You were wonderful. All aboard. Well, sir, it looks as though we're ready to pull out, and so until next Monday night. And my Maryland, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> The Great Waltz was presented by special arrangement with Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae can currently be seen starring in Warner Brothers' About Face. Lucille Norman can soon be seen in the Warner Brothers production Carson City. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now stay tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.